Back with TSPN on this uh, day before Thanksgiving, and the Supervisor Richard Forster with your Board of Supervisors meeting report from November 24th, Tuesday, and um, full agenda yesterday with um, items that required a lot of discussion. First up on the agenda was a, a discussion on the 2015 Pavement Management Program Update Report. So, a lot of information here that. Uh, the board covered and uh, good explanation from Margo Yap, um, a practicing engineer with a consulting firm NCE on a study that was funded through ACTC and this is a pavement management report not just for the county of Amador but for all five incorporated cities. So um, hence ACTC paying for it. If you, uh, you don't have to zoom in on this but this is basically what it looks like. It's a conglomeration of all the roads in the county that lists uh, their pavement index and what kind of shape they're in. Um, really comprehensive and gives us an idea where we're at. Now if you average all of these out, the average pavement index for the county is about 57. So um, with that, that's not very good. Um, that 57 is uh, between the range of what they say 50 to 70 is at risk. The other ranges are good to very good. We have about uh, 29, almost 30% of the roads in the county uh, are in that good to very good range from 70 to 100. From 50 to 69 is fair at about 31.5%. Poor, 31.5% again. And very poor or failed, 7.3% on the rating scale. Those 7.3% uh, poor or very poor uh, county's probably not going to do much about those roads because there are very um, little travel on those roads. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the resources to take care of what we have. The county's only putting about because of budgetary constraints and uh, we put in what we get back from the state. We're not getting much back from the state, about $150,000 a year into um, the budget. But uh, as uh, Ms. Yap, Yap indicated, the uh, Pavements are deteriorating rapidly. The asphalt prices have gone up almost five-fold since 1999, and the funding has not kept up with pace. So uh, what she was looking at, what, what does the county owner maintain? What condition is it in? What repairs are needed? How many dollars are required to maintain or improve streets cost-effectively? We have about um, just short of 400 center mile lanes in the county, and uh, as she said, you can pay now or you can pay more later. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be paying more later, I think, because uh, we just do not have the money. This year, we had one-time money that came in. We put about an extra half million dollars in the roads. As Aaron Bruce Torrey, our community development director, indicated, that's about enough to do f chip and seal on five miles of road. And chip and seal is just a, a Band-Aid, basically, on the roadways. So, um, to improve to a PCI, or road index uh, scale, pavement index, scale of 57 would cost about $99 million over 10 years. To improve it up to 70, about $130 million over 10 years. So the existing budget, $150,000 a year at this rate, uh, the PCI will drop to 11 in 20 years. And that's that uh, very poor or failed. If you look at a pie chart, three quarters of that pie chart right now is in the red, so at risk. Uh, by 2034, so in 20 years, you will drop to 11 if we keep up with the pace that we're going. We have an unfunded backlog and it continues to grow. So this is a problem that the uh, Board of Supervisors will continue to struggle with. I know we have um, tried to pass measures before, self-help measures in the county, and they have failed miserably. So um, I'm not going to say the taxpayers aren't doing their fair share because you pay your road tax. It's just what goes to the state doesn't always funnel back to the counties, and there um, hence lies the problem. So we'll continue to work on this. The state is looking at a road user tax on state highways. That would be a per mile tax that uh, people would pay. They're already investigating that. They're in the pilot mode. By 2020, it looks like that will probably be implemented statewide with some kind of GPS tracking so they'll know how many miles you travel. Other items up today, uh, Jeff Gardner was in from City of Plymouth asking for a uh, loan, and the terms were somewhat uh, undefined for this loan, but uh, it was for the purpose 
of uh, taking money out of our Amador County Water Supply Fund, which has over $3 million into it. Sounds like a lot of money, but some of these projects uh, eat up a lot of money very quickly. They uh, want a loan in the range of about $300,000 to cover the city's portion of the matching grant. This would be about 25% from uh, Cal OES, the operation or the uh, emergency system for, from our state for repairs needed on the Arroyo ditch that were caused when the sand fire went through the uh, area where the ditch is located, burned up a lot of uh, plumes and a lot of trees dropped on the, um, the ditch itself. So a lot of work is needed there if you're going to maintain that um, right that the county has to that water. And um, it's a little uh, questionable whether that right still is a hard right because the water has not been used, uh, the, uh, taking water out of the consumers down the uh, Arroyo Ditch to City of Plymouth area has not been used consistently over the last um, 20, 30, 40 years. And uh, that's what you need to do to maintain a water right. So these are pre-1929 Water rights, would you have an advantage there, but you may get a challenge down the road if you start diverting large amounts of water from the Mokami. The original estimate was $2.2 million. After Cal OES looked at this, the estimate went down to about $900,000 uh, because of um, variations in the way they looked at uh, rehabilitation of the area. The 25% uh, matching grant was uh, supposed to be waived by Cal OES because Plymouth is considered a disadvantaged area. That was not waived, and uh, it looks like now it, it will not be. That's why the city is looking for this loan. But um, they're ex requesting an extended payment. I think the board would be favorable in looking at a 10- to 15-year repayment schedule at a very low interest rate. But even at that, you're still looking at City of Plymouth coming up with uh, ten to $20,000 per year to make the payments on that. They're hoping that they will qualify for Prop 1B grants um, and be able to um, pay this off um, quicker or get a, a grant to um, basically replace that loan from the county and pay it off. And uh, with that, uh, the board did grant um, the approval with um, asking Mr. Gardner to come back with uh, terms and work with our CAO, Chuck Eiley, on this. Board of Supervisors made quick work of uh, approving the agreement with uh, for a resolution to... Uh, approve the split of funds between S City of Ione and County of Amador. Uh, this is the money, $800 per inmate of the new uh, infill project that's being built at Mule Creek State Prison. There's uh, 1,584 new inmates at $800. That comes up to about $1.267 million. That's split in half. School district gets half of it right off the top. The um, rest of the money, county and city negotiate uh, I advocated strongly for City of Ione because uh, I feel most of the impacts are going to be with the city, but uh, there are impacts with the county. So uh, the county will use $125,000 for improvements to our jail, and uh, City of Ione will take the money, and as John Hank and the city manager indicated, they'll, uh, they're looking at improvements to pavement on West Marlette, and... Uh, the water line that comes from U.S. Mines, the, uh, formerly the Uniman plant, they're trying to lower that cost and uh, do an open cut and get that um, in use so that they can uh, have fire protection and water during the, uh, the uh, warmer periods of time for Howard Park. Uh, board developed um, or approved a discussion to develop a uh, preliminary MOU with the Calaveras Amateur Volunteer Forestry Team. This is a, a great group of people who are committing their own uh, time, volunteering their own time, uh, to work on restoration of the areas in Amador and Calaveras County uh, for the, uh, where the Butte fire came through. The uh, individuals, and I think I do want to name them, John Heisenbuttel, Ann Heisenbuttel, Pat McGreevy, John Hoffman, Jan Bray, uh, Paul Maben, and Thomas Lowry. Most of these individuals are registered foresters and uh, they're committing their time. They're going to use methods such as mulching with straw and or wood material installation of water bars and rolling dips, seeding, contour, failing and uh, contour uh, falling and other methods. But uh, this is a grant that they're applying for $550,000 from the Federal Emergency Management Agency and California Office of Emergency Services or Cal OES. 
Um, other issue I want to cover before I run out of time is the uh, state of Jefferson. The board discussed this issue at the uh, chairman, put it on the agenda at the request of people. Uh, at the end of the day, the board voted to uh, send this to the people and let the people vote whether they want to become the part of the state of Jefferson. Um, I have to admit I'm not a big uh, supporter of this. If the people say they want to do it, um, I, I'll follow that lead. But uh, my thing is I think the, the logical place to go here is uh, redistricting. And uh, if you want to change um, you want to change things, then go back to redistricting, draw the lines up fairly, and get these uh, districts aligned so that they're competitive. Uh, they've been set up over the last two redistricting so that either the Republican is safe or the Democrat is safe in almost every district. That's uh, not healthy for our state, and uh, hopefully um, that will change in the future. But on this day, we voted to send this to the uh, voters, and um, the new state of Jefferson model basically would have one senator per county and about 60 to 70 assembly members after more like the federal model. But um, that will be decided down the road, uh, hopefully in June, on the ballot. We have other issues, and if you want to investigate those, go to our county website or give us a call, 223-6470. This is Supervisor Richard Forrester. We'll talk to you um, after our next meeting. We'll be right back. Amador County's local television network. 